This is an interesting research paper that caught my eye. Generative Latent Neural PDE Solver Using Flow Matching, put out by Carnegie Mellon University on March 28, 2025. Uh, to me, transformer, diffusion transformers very specifically, I think are going to blow up more and more. I see more people talking about them overall, and it's my hunch, my suspicion, that uh, at least part of the element of GPT-40 and the update with regards towards its uh, image generation is related towards diffusion transformers. Like I, I think it has to have diffusion transformers built into it. And then so I think like a lot more people are interested in this concept overall. And I think as uh, people find that it can actually solve some unique problems, more people will like oh, <laughs> gravitate towards it, right? Like it's... um. If a, like machine learning and AI were a city, like and and you had like all different parts of the city, to me very specifically, diffusion would be like the carnival <laughs> of the city, very specifically, right? And and like uh, I'm gonna showcase that to you and, and showcase why exactly I have that feeling regarding diffusion overall within this video. But to me, it's all like um, carnival games, right? Like step right up, step right up, because it's it's. Um, flashy up front like what it will do like like i can you know like um take like schrodinger's cat put it in a box and i'm gonna find it you know step right up and then but it's it's uh there's limitations to it it's, it, it is all based off of diffusion right and the limitations are hard and fast and not where you would think that they would be, right? So let's um, dive into First, let's dive into this paper. So this paper, very specifically, um, if you're uh, like, uh, if you aren't aware overall, so what the paper is uh, trying to do is solve partial differential equations. Uh, and then so they're taking partial differential equations, training a diffusion model on them, in this instance, a diffusion transformer model. Um, and then the second thing that they're doing is they're also um, like um, shrinking that down into um, like 2D space, essentially. And then so you get an abstract of, of uh all of the PDEs in this instance, uh, and then the model like outputs those um, abstracts, and then within this instance, like uh, within the partial diffusion, like the partial differential equations, uh, utilizing like probabilistic aspects and blends of every single PDE that it's been trained on, it can create new PDEs or like. Um, not brand new PDEs, right? And that's the like what we're gonna show within here. This is the distinction, like, and that's why I put it within like the carnival games, right? It will never, ever, ever produce uh, like an actual novel uh, PDE. Like it can't. Like it's uh, inherently built into how diffusion works <laughs> overall, right? Um, so, uh, kind of explaining that out. The most simplistic way that I can explain that as a general concept is so how you would train this model in this instance, and it's like a cool carnival game effect to me, right? Because so you essentially like you take let's call it like Schrodinger's box. And then you put a cat in there, um, and then the cat in this instance will represent our PDE problem, right? So one Schrodinger's box and one cat equals one PDE problem. Uh, and then so uh, in this instance, we do that, but then we do that, let's say, 10,000 times. And then so we put, we have 10,000 boxes and 10,000 cats. And then we we uh, train a model on the outcome of that. Like uh, uh, And then so the model then becomes and is able to probabilistically uh, determine and like create um, a probabilistic blend of those thousand iterations of the of the cat in the box right it won't be a cat and a box and it won't be like ever like uh, like like one of them but and it will ever be like a brand new cat and a brand new box but it will be a probabilistic blend of all of that in between right so it's every single time it will be some sort of blend and some sort of meld between all of those concepts that we put into the box overall. Um, and that's essentially how the concept works. And then within that, there's huge limitations, right? This is the biggest one. Like a lot of people uh, gravitate towards uh, things like this. So this is like a good analogy for me to, to showcase the limitations within this, right? Like uh, this is like a wine glass overflowing 
within AI. So if you try this within any other model except for the GPT-40 model, <laughs> the new one, which was it was likely reinforcement learning trained specifically uh, to handle this specific problems. But uh, as you can see, it like the AI models, they can't do it. <laughs> and that's what it's showcasing here. That's why it became kind of a big deal. Like you can't get it to like actually overflow the glass. Except for like, see, two days ago when when GPT-40 can do it, right? But anything uh, less recent, it's it's gonna mess it up. <laughs> Overall, is kind of the the bottom line. And then within that, it's all goes back to how that probabilistic blend, that like carnival game aspect of diffusion works, right? It's it's not solving new concepts overall. Um, but within this, you can do it to have and, and generate like within the limitations of that, like um, for in this instance, partial differential equations, uh, you can utilize it to, to um, essentially create uh, some novel that would be novel within the probabilistic blend that is trained on, right? And then so they show that within this research paper and then their uh, model that they benchmark out gets really good results um, on that. Like, uh, and then these benchmark results are like really good for a model and they're usually, like, they, they use a big diffusion model in this instance, right? Which is like my second problem within this is that like these models are very, very big. Uh, and then, but so within this paper, I wanted to like, like I always do, I want to essentially uh, reconstruct the paper here, but like uh, I don't have access to the compute that they do for to make like this big of a model that they did here. So I'm simplifying a lot of things within their method, but then I'm also like, I, I have a method here, like uh, should have been a swarm diffusion algorithm, <laughs> and I'll showcase that to you, where I get like really close to these benchmarks, and then I'm just utilizing like pure CPU, like uh, nothing very special at all within it, and then like just showcasing like um, kind of it just, you know, think a little bit outside of the box with these things and you can uh, take them off the rails. And then so uh, this collab notebook explores two distinct approaches for modeling and predicting the evolution of partial differential equations or PDEs using deep learning. The first method we're going to showcase is flow matching with diffusion transformers. And then this section implements a flow matching framework to learn the dynamics of a PDE. It utilizes an autoencoder to compress high dimensional PDE solutions into a lower dimensional latent space and I'm going to showcase to you exactly what that looks like and demonstrate that out. A diffusion transformer network is trained to predict the velocity field and the latent space enabling time evolution prediction. So all of this comes down to like uh, the geometry of the data set which I talk about a lot on this channel right where it's literally predicting on the geometry of the data of the abstract of the data set. And then so lastly, this notebook generates synthetic heat equation data and trains the model to predict future states given an initial condition. Um, so utilizing diffusion, we have to uh, utilize a heat equation. And then so that's kind of how we do it, right? So synthetic heat. Um, and then the second instance, like kind of like taking this off of the rails is swarm diffusion. And then this section introduces a novel swarm based diffusion model for PDE prediction. It represents the latent space as a collection of interacting agents that evolve over time. So all of this, like, uh, this mapping of the latent space is the most important concept of this, right? That's essentially what the diffusion transformer does. And then so I just have agents or swarm agents uh, mimic that overall. Like, you're taking uh, and you're putting all of this into Schrodinger's box, and then you're training a model on Schrodinger's box already, right? So you're already introducing some aspect of, like, probability and removal, and especially layers of abstractness and, and multiple levels to this, right? So I just add one more layer of abstract probability to that within and having the swarm agents actually, like, um, abstract the space and and um, simulate the space itself basically overall and then so um, a simplified diffusion process is used to iteratively update the ag agent positions toward a target latent space state the model aims to capture the underlying PDE dynamics through the collective behavior of these agents. This section also utilizes an autoencoder. It's the same autoencoder for latent space representation, and then also the same calculations for synthetic heat. And then so let's go through here. Uh, essentially, the very first thing that we have to do is build out our autoencoder. Um, and then so I'm just utilizing uh, ReLU, building out a, st a straightforward convolutional neural network, a 2D convolutional neural network utilizing ReLU in this instance. 
And then we have our diffusion transformer. Uh, and then so uh, this is like what most people are, are um, very curious about within like uh, this sort of architecture. And then so it's you just take the, the transformer architecture and then you add a diffusion block within it within the feed forward layer here. Uh, and then uh, add a little bit of math. It's not hard to, to tr make a diffusion transformer block. Um, and then so that's the, the whole block for the, the diffusion transformer there. And then we have this uh, flow matching framework, which is much harder than the diffusion transformer block itself. And then this is where we're actually like, we're creating like essentially the the grid mapping and the all of the geometry needed. And then we're generating our data. And I'm just using like synthetic data in this instance. Uh, and then we're wrapping it around a training harness. So we have our training, and then we're training our auto encoder train flow matching and then inference. So straightforward there. Um, and then we're uh, benchmarking on the same benchmarks as the paper. So you can say C E A E and F M so that we have the same benchmarks here that we're trying to benchmark towards. And then our FM loss in this instance, I train it for um, 40, 40 epochs and then it gets down to 1.03. But remember this is a significantly uh, like a decreased model in terms of performance as opposed to what they're showcasing and demonstrating within this paper here where they're getting it down to like uh let's say two like 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 um uh like a, a two-thirds better uh, a performance than me right like 75 percent better on the performance overall um, but so like you can see overall, my performance here isn't great as well. So we have our context and our ground truth. So again, it's creating those abstracts and then utilizing and creating kind of like a, like a heat map, right? And then so the heat map to generate the shape um, and then to get it. And then so it's mapping off of the shape, right? And so here's the context, here's the ground truth. Uh, and then this doesn't look very much like any, like these two, right? <laughs> it's um, very off. And then you can see that here, right? This is above one. We want this like like as low as possible right this loss uh the closer to zero like zero is is zero loss right so perfect reconstruction um and then so this is again just simple model simplifying everything that is within that research paper overall just for like showcasing and demonstrating purposes on a cpu so uh beefing up this model overall in significant ways and then uh, like you know, employing more of the mathematics that they build within the research paper there will get much better performance but i'm just trying to demonstrate the overall concept that they they lay out here um, and then here's the performance that i get from that but then trying to again take it off the rails so all i do in this instance is i like the auto encoder is still the same right so it's still the 2d convolutional network with relu nothing has changed there but then instead of that um, diffusion transformer, I, you can see I define a swarm agent uh, and then the swarm diffusion model. So it's just utilizing swarm agents uh, exactly as I said to uh, like uh, go through the latent space and then the agents like mimic the latent space uh, and, and where like the targets in latent space is to where they are. Uh, and then we just update all of the predictions based off of that, off of like uh, residual noise basically, uh, which is kind of like interesting to me overall. Uh, and then we, have our training mechanism uh, generate our predictions of the mean agent positions uh, and then data generation is all the same training and evaluation is basically the same except for we're wrapping it around the swarm diffusion model and then uh, as you can see I like uh, half the loss right uh, half the loss it takes like the same or less time to run overall uh, and then here's our context here's our ground truth and then you can see much better uh, implementation and prediction overall right it's able to like match every shape uh, here so uh, and we get very good like uh, context mapping of the shapes overall so context to ground truth to prediction and you can actually see if we count them out like one two three four five six distinct shapes right so then one two three four five six distinct shapes and so that's kind of what we're showcasing there again it's 0.56 right so if we got it down even low, like the lower and lower that we would get the closer that this would get to context and ground truth but you can see this is much closer to context and ground truth and this prediction than what we're looking at here right it doesn't converge at all in this particular instance like where there's not six distinct shapes within over here whereas over here we beautifully have our six distinct shapes right i mean very simplistically like they're they're there uh and then so overall um this is um 
diffu like uh, utilizing diffusion and then training it for partial differential equations and for solving partial differential equations. But again, I can't highlight it enough that uh, utilizing diffusion in this instance and, and in these instances is very much a parlor trick, right? If uh, like. It, it, is it intelligence overall? Like I, I'm not. Uh, like it depends on your definition of intelligence, right? I'm not going to say that it's not. Um, like diffusion is not um, under any category of intelligence because there's definitely definitions of intelligence that it could fall under. Uh, if you're looking for like um, anything that is like related at all to like I don't know, we'll call it like human intelligence or like um, animal intelligence, <laughs> anything along those spectrums, then diffusion would be to me like as far away from uh, those concepts as you, you can get overall. And there are some people that say that like there's parts of our brains that definitely do utilize diffusion processes, like so that a part of our brain has like, um, you know, that's where the, the model for the fusion transformers comes from, uh, because it's kind of like, uh, which could be the case overall. And then so I, I can't knock that. Um, and then building it into transformers, as we can see, it does have like use cases overall, <laughs> but to the the problem within it, like uh, it's computationally expensive and you can't get the same results off of a, basing it within transformers is the bottom line right like these like stuff like this just doesn't lie to me like you look at this compared to this it's just which one is a is a, a better base to start from <laughs> overall right if i'm if i want to fine tune these two from here which one would you rather want to fine tune and like spend your uh, time and money investing into fine tuning and then like for some reason <laughs> the market is choosing this one i don't know why but like they like they want this one to work and then like uh I, I maybe you'll maybe I think it's possible to get this one to work uh, into this with like uh, all the money <laughs> like but uh, it, all someone has to do is just do this with none of the money and then they do the same thing and then so like I mean, like to me it's just why waste all of the money right uh, but uh, if you want to <laughs> I can do this and I'll, I'll waste your money for you so like hit me up if you want to do that but uh, if you like this type of content please like and subscribe thank you very much